So what tips do you have for anybody that's looking to get started as an entrepreneur? I would say cut off all distractions 100%. We're back on the Fit Team show with Shanae Moray. Shanae, welcome. Hey, Chris. I'm grateful to be here. We're grateful to have you and look forward to getting to know a little bit about you and you sharing your story. I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing it. I haven't really shared my story before. Awesome. So that's, that's, we're the first ones then. Yeah, you, you really are. I've only shared like a few bits and pieces on some healthcare podcasts, but never a big, you know, scope. Awesome. So if you would, just for anybody that's just watching, just give us a, uh, just a quick, you know, 60 second overview, then I'm going to start hitting you with some different questions. Okay. So my name is Shanae Murray, and I'm the co-founder of MedStake Media. We help healthcare companies grow through marketing and billing services. And I'm also a LinkedIn creator, and I've uh, amassed a network of nearly 40,000 followers in 10 months. Awesome. So for, for those that don't know you, obviously the LinkedIn community does, but where, where'd you grow up? Where do you live now? Some of that, just some of your okay. history. So I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, in Las Olas, probably until I was 14. And then I moved to Parkland with my family. My, uh, my mom is Puerto Rican and my dad is Cuban, but born here. And you're currently living where now? Boca, East Boca. Okay, so jumping into your story, let's start with your childhood. Tell us, like, you know, anything you want to share with us about your childhood. Okay, well, I was, um, when I was a kid, I was diagnosed with bilateral Wilms tumor disease, so I had cancer in both my kidneys, and they told my mom that, like, after I was diagnosed, that I was, I had, like, 30 days to live. Wow. Like, it was serious. Um. About what age was that? I was probably, like, five when wow. it started, so it was, like, 10 years in and out of Jackson Memorial Hospital. And the only reason that I was diagnosed, which is ac this was lucky, because a lot of kids, it's not like this, was my kidneys were swollen. So, like, you could vi visibly see something, you know what I mean? Uh, if you can't visibly see anything, then you just, it keeps getting worse and worse. But anyway, so after that, I had multiple surgeries. So, like, to answer your question, as a child, I didn't have a regular childhood. It was like... The biggest chunk of my childhood was living in and out of hospitals for like a lot of the time. Wow. Wow. So you didn't have much of a childhood, but some of the, you know, I guess good memories you have besides the hospital, what like things did you do or some hobbies that you had or some things that oh, you I liked? Oh, I love the beach. I mean, like my stepdad is like avid, like adventurer. And uh, so I love going to the water, uh, surfing or swimming. Uh, sports. I've always been into sports, even though like my mom was always nervous because of my kidneys. But I love to swim. I was always on the swim team and cross country. So I always like was pretty athletic and like energetic as a child. But I also loved to read, and I always did well in school. So after high school, talk about like what you did. What I did. Okay, so after high school, I went to college. So I went to Eckerd College in St. Pete and then the Honors College of FAU in Jupiter and I studied philosophy and psychology and straight out of college I was recruited by Audi for their marketing department so I was like um, a customer service slash like marketing um, manager at one of the Audi locations and like their training actually taught me a lot because like they have like their top trainers come in and teach you some things but there I just really learned how to deal with a lot of people because I was uh, kind of like the middle person between upper management and the sales guys. So I would mm -hmm. have to deal with like 10 brothers, like all the salesmen, and then communicate, you know, certain goals to like the managing, the marketing and management upper level. Talking about working at Audi, mm -hmm. if you would, sh you shared a story with me. We did a video not too long ago. If you would share that with everybody, the importance of you just never know who people know or who are people connected to and, and never judge a book by its cover is a simple way to say it for people that are listening. A hundred percent. So at Audi, I wasn't a salesperson, but I learned very quickly that like the top sales guys, they would treat everybody the same because people would come in very flashy. 
and they would be like, yeah, I'm going to get this car, but they would have terrible credit, they would have no money, and a lot of the times it was, like, the most humble people coming in that, like, would have, like, a perfect credit score and just, like, a ton of capital to walk away with. And so one day, a, w a woman came in, and she was, like, literally dressed in pajamas, her hair was a complete mess, and none of the sales guys wanted to deal with her because that, that's just how they were sometimes. So I just started talking to her and I like knew the education of the cars, but I didn't really know, like I didn't, couldn't take her on a test drive or anything. So I really wasn't selling, I was just educating. And she's like, oh, I like Audi, I have like three of them, whatever. And she ended up being a top pediatric neurosurgeon at Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital. It was her day off and she just needed to get some cars. So she walked away with like three paid, uh, Thing was q7s scvs wow and that was like a huge learning lesson and it was a huge learning lesson for the salespeople because you know they treated her like she wasn't anybody because of the way she looked right and management really respected me after that because i was the only one that gave her attention it's a great lesson is there any other circumstance or situation that you could share or something similar um just like some of the most experienced and wealthy people I know in terms of business, they are just super humble. So I know the owner of a orange juice brand, he barely wears shoes because he lives in the country. And uh, a huge developer in New York, he drove a Honda, like I think for 10 years after he was officially a multimillionaire. And so like just humility is part of the game when you're I think trying to acquire that level of, of success it's extremely important so take us from from Audi to MedStake Media that that the time in between there what were you doing and share that so with us in, in the time in between I had a I had a baby so I had a daughter um, she's two and a half now but when she was uh, one she was sick. She got sick and she was admitted to the hospital for about 14 days, spinal tap, everything. And I uh, had left Audi for like a healthcare company. And I was doing their like content creation, creative director for them. Doing very well. I loved it, but I wasn't working for myself. And like after like 15 days in the hospital, my boss was like, hey, when are you going to come back? But like my you know, I'm a single parent to live, so she was, I had to be by her side in the hospital. Like, I couldn't just leave her. And in the hospital, I just made a decision to just go all in on copywriting, mm -hmm. uh, healthcare copywriting. So uh, in one month, I actually replaced my, full, my then full-time income uh, with just freelance healthcare copywriting. And I did that, like, by just staying up till 2, 3 in the morning. And, like, the third week in, I... I landed a, a big deal uh, from a gentleman that lived in Parkland. Awesome, that's great. And then that just motivated me to do more. To keep going. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So tell us about getting started with MedStake. Is that your first, so copywriting is your first entrepreneurial adventure? Right. So uh, after I had been copywriting a little bit, uh, a girl told me to get LinkedIn. This was like around July of 2018. So I like got LinkedIn, but I was just kind of like looking at like posts. I wasn't posting myself. And then um, I started posting like in November and my videos were doing very well just from the get go. And then that's how Courtney got to know me. Like uh, she reached out and then we just hit it off from the beginning. She started sending me a bunch of referrals because Courtney does medical billing and in healthcare, after you set up a doctor's office with insurance and billing, they need marketing to get patients in the door. So she just kept referring so many clients to me and I was like, why don't we just do a one-stop shop? It doesn't exist in the industry at all. And in healthcare, the owners and physicians, they want convenience more than anything. Mm -hmm. So we created a one-stop shop and it's done very well in what, nine months, 10 months. So talk about like some of your, um, you know, your first posts that you put on LinkedIn, because obviously that's, what's given you such um, a great awareness to what you're doing and so my first post I just introduced myself I was like hi my name is Shanae and uh, I just I actually told people how to say my name because everyone was saying like Shaney or Shawnee and uh, so that was my first video and I or Shaney yeah or Shaney 
and it got like 5,000 views, but I thought it was just a coincidence. And then my second video was talking about like some scars that I had from surgery, because I have a ton of, I have a chemo keloid right here where they put the chemo from the port. And I have like scars on my kidneys and stuff. And, uh, but I was like talking about how scars shouldn't define you, right? Because a woman told me I should get scar cream and I was like, no, that's part of my story. So that video did amazing. And my videos just kept getting more and more reach. So I started asking people like, what, what is it? Cause they weren't edited. I look like a mess sometimes. And people were just like, it's what you're saying. So I just started to just share my message more and uh, people have responded really well. Awesome. So you've obviously went through some, you know, challenges as an entrepreneur. Talk about just some tough experiences getting started as an entrepreneur. You've kind of so, had yeah. some great success early on, but you went through a lot in your life. So you're I able did. to relate to a lot of different people and you know, you're authentic. So people yeah. like that about so you. The so the toughest experience, uh, which was kind of like disappointing and heartbreaking is like my own family didn't even believe in me in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And like, they kind of like doubt what you're doing until they see it's like real. So like I had to like, in the beginning, I just cut out all negative distraction and negative input and whether it came from my family or friends, like I cut off best friends I'd had for years. And, uh, you know, after just growing for four, five, six months, they came back around and apologized. But that was probably the most difficult is not even having the people that should believe in you the most to believe in you. I think that's common for a lot of entrepreneurs is the family is some sometimes your toughest critic. But as y your journey continues, and as you become more and more successful, they're like become your biggest cheerleaders and exactly. they forget they were they were, you know yeah they apologize <laughs> like when they see it's just like human nature i guess when they see you doing better they see me being able to provide better for live they see you level up a little bit but still remain humble and travel and do what you love while they're still in a nine to five then they start saying oh how can i do this too or how can i help your mission so so talk about that real quick it's the difference from a nine to five and now being an entrepreneur working you know when you want to work it's a lot more pressure right so when you go to a nine to five like you just kind of have related job duties and then you leave and you could kind of shut off but when you're an entrepreneur your everything is your fault if it goes wrong you better have the solutions on the spot everything is based on communication you can't depend on anyone to like come and fix the problem so I don't think it's for everybody and I think that's something in our culture that like everyone should be an entrepreneur I don't think that everyone should be because some people don't want to be um, it's a lot more pressure but a lot more re reward at the same time because there's so much personal development that goes with it right and usually it depends what your core values are if you're looking mm -hmm. for security or if you're looking for independence or you know to be able to have control of your own your own freedom your own time it's true so what about, you know, some of, you've accomplished many goals, but just let's do three. Let's go through three things that, you know, goals that you accomplished. The first one we just talked about is just being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, an accomplishment in itself to be able to work at home and, you know, be with, be with Liv. Liv. Yeah. So that's the first one. What about two other goals that you accomplished as an entrepreneur? I went from like very, very little income and we broke you know six figures very quickly like within the first three months but my my greatest accomplishment accomplishments have been like the relationships that we've built like we've built relationships with like healthcare ceos that do like 100 million or more mm -hmm. and that like have given us chances with one facility but like if we do well in the next six months to 12 months they have 20 other facilities waiting for us so i think like even you know even our relationship working relationship like you gave a chance and it's just all about delivery and um that's that's the greatest accomplishment for me is just getting those opportunities and then being able to like help other companies grow so what about um do you feel like at this point you found like your purpose oh 100 percent. i feel like my purpose is to really help you know, improve the messaging for healthy lifestyle brands and for healthcare companies throughout um, the U.S. and then globally soon. My whole mindset has, has changed. So the more I grow, the more I'll be able to give back. Like one of our main missions in 2020 is to donate $100,000 to charity. 
for pediatric cancer because Courtney's son also had cancer. Wow. So that's my purpose is, uh, and then also like now kind of through demand, it's speaking. So people kind of resonate with what I say. So I want to uplift as many people as possible that maybe come from humble beginnings or have certain uh, health issues and that feel like they're all alone. So you mentioned your mindset changed. What do mm -hmm. you think it was that helped you shift your mindset and, you know, so quickly, just a few short months? Obviously, you know, you work hard, and I think that's, you know, a big percentage of the battle. But I think it starts in between our ears, mm -hmm. you know, obviously being grateful and that mindset. So what do you think it is that you – is it people you – new people you were spending time with, mm -hmm. different things you – books you were reading, audios? What, what do you think it was? I think that, like, I entered – and this is different from a lot of people my age. I entered this game super humble. And like I am just like a sponge um, around the right people, you know, willing to learn. And I'm not uh, arrogant. At least I don't think I am. And uh, so that's it. Just being like looking at uh, maybe one to three people and like emulating their best qualities and staying humble and working like a monster something i love about you is your mindset of you know make make my kids the reason mm -hmm. so lives you know your why a big why and yeah. there's a lot of people that they struggle they're always looking for balance and you know the excuses for you know why they're why they don't do something mm -hmm. so if you would touch on that yeah a lot of people ask me like oh how have you done this uh you know with a child because Liv just started school like, what, 60 days ago because of her birthday, lands in December. So for the major major part of this, I only did this with like a nanny and like at home and you know, just, it, I've had many conference calls where it's like on and off mute with Liv screaming in the background and it's been tough. But how I do that is I just think I would never want her to suffer in any type of way and I want her to be able to go after her purpose and people can say what they want to say but finances are important right mm. um, resources are important if you've ever had a sick child or sick family member and they need medicine and you don't have those resources that's when you really realize how important money is so I never want her to have to think about those resources number one and number two like how I balance is that I'm more than just her mother so ultimately like yeah it's you know i love her and i'll protect her and provide for her but my mission is like more than her i want to help like millions of other people and you know she'll start understanding that as she grows older and she's gonna you know watch you and i, I always believe that kids learn the best from not what you say from what you do so mm -hmm. if you can show live you're out there doing everything you can to live your best life making an impact mm -hmm. that's what she's gonna want to do right and security makes children um, healthy, like in a way, like if they're not worried about what they're eating or where they're sleeping or certain financial stresses, they're secure. So one thing that I try to do is I try to show her like what is taking away from her time with me. I bring her to speaking events and uh, I show her videos and I showed her a video of me in a dress and she goes, mommy princess. So that she starts understanding like what I'm doing when I'm not with her. One of the most important things is obviously showing them the reward. So the fruits mm -hmm. of your labor, the hard work that you put in. So yeah. obviously they'll support you or they start to understand why you're doing what you do. Right. Like, I mean, it's she doesn't really want many things now, but like, yeah, she's she's in school. She's learning. And the main thing is that she's just provided for and healthy and um, that she understands that I have a mission, you know, more than just being her mother. So switch gears, let's get into the importance of teamwork. You know, you mentioned Courtney, you don't have to mention any names, but there's obviously there's you and there's always a team of people that are, are unrecognized. Just talk about the importance of, of teamwork and surround yourself with great people. I think that solopreneurs really cap themselves because there's only so much time you could do, like so much time in a day, there's only so much things uh, that one person can accomplish. So one thing that I say is like, let's say take 10 hours of work uh, a day. If you have three people on your team, that automatically goes from 10 to 30 hours just in one day. And you're not the best at everything. So I have a very different personality than the two other major players on my team. 
and some people will like me more and some people may like them more so it's just understanding uh the sphere that you're in and leveraging everyone's strengths where when and where they should be leveraged right a quote i love is i would rather have one percent of 100 people's efforts and 100 percent of my own exactly 100 percent. i and it feels good right so like we've added people to our team as we go along and we just added somebody who was actually homeless last year and now she has a dependable income for her and her three children and that's really rewarding that just makes me want to do more no, that's great anybody that doubts you cut them off even if they're i know it sounds harsh but this is what i did even if they're family just cut them off they'll come back around when they see you know uh, when they see changes happening in your life that's what i would say distractions are what will keep you from being able to achieve something great with like six months of serious focus just get the momentum rolling and if you keep being distracted and going out and partying and having this doubt in your ear, it's going to be hard to accomplish something. Obviously, we both agree is find something you're passionate about, and that's going to be something you want to put time into. You know, find your purpose. For someone that doesn't, you know, doesn't have a purpose, doesn't have a passion, do you, do you have any tips to help them get started? Or, or, or mm -hmm. I would say change your environment because they haven't found their purpose or their passion because they're probably, you know, we're creatures of habit. So they're probably rolling around the same people in the same circles, going to the same places. I would say try to, you know, shift your environment, go to new meetings, meet new people, and then, you know, wait for that spark to hit. That's what I would say. Right. We're the average of the five people you spend, you know, your most time with. So if you're spending time with people don't have goals, don't have dreams, aren't inspired, you probably won't be inspired as well. Exactly. And if you're always going to the same places, it's probably around those same people. So if you haven't found your passion or your purpose, change your environment, change the people that you're spending time with. And you've already mentioned, obviously, your network's growing. You've met, you know, pe people from all walks of life, different healthcare CEOs. But talk about the importance of, you know, meeting new people and your network is your net worth and why you want to meet people and expand your mindset and mm -hmm. expand your thinking. Yeah, this is actually a great question because, like, when I started, like, I was so shy because people think I'm social because of my network, but I'm actually, like, an introvert and I'm pretty shy. Courtney is the one that's, you know, outgoing and everything. But so it was kind of difficult for me to start networking, going to these events and just talking to strangers, but it's become easier and easier, and it's just, like, it's just all about chance and numbers. And I really believe you're always one opportunity or one person away from like your, you know, your next great chance. So how can you do that if you're sitting at home? And I know that's like a thing nowadays because of online and webinars. And, but if you don't take those connections offline, if you don't get out there, then it's going to be really hard for you to radically change your lifestyle. Um, so you mentioned, you know, take some online relationships offline. I'm a big believer in that is you know anytime you connect with someone in person that's huge if you would touch a little bit more on that yeah so i've i've known or conversed with people on linkedin for months before and then you know i meet them online or in person it's just irreplaceable there's you can't replace like looking somebody in the eyes you just can't or like seeing their smile it's also knowing that that person is taking putting you as a priority. So that person got in their car, went to see you, spent money to get their gas, uh, got lunch or coffee, maybe paid for yours as well. And they're like investing in that relationship and you can't take that for granted. If they cancel on you, it's like you're not important. So you have to do for people, make sure that they feel important and you only do that through meeting them in person, if you can. I agree. I think that, you know, meeting people in, por in person just just takes the relationship to another level. Yeah, it's irreplaceable. So where you're at now, you know, you obviously you have some goals and, and some dreams. If you would just touch on, you know, anything else you would want to share with everybody, maybe some, some things that recently happened, how's your health, any questions that we would like to know that you haven't shared so far? Um, my health is good. So I've been in remission for over 10 years and oh. I just, you know, I take care of my health. I believe that that's a huge thing. Like when you ask for another tip in entrepreneurship, if you're unhealthy, if you're overweight or just have health problems, really fix that because everything in entrepreneurship is energy. So if somebody has the energy to outwork you, like you're always going to feel like you're behind. And one way to optimize energy is to 
you know, to feel healthy. And that comes from the inside out. Other things I want to share, I want to get into, you know, certain speaking. Uh, I've had to do that a little bit by demand. You know that lately. And I love it. So I see kind of like adding more speaking engagements. And this is just really the beginning. It's only been nine months. So I have big goals. I have two years until I turn 30. You're just getting started. And that's one of the most important things for anybody that's looking to be an entrepreneur or improve their health, improve their fitness, whatever it is, is just get started. Yeah, like, I mean, I can't, it's almost unfathomable to me how I've changed my life in like, what, nine months, 10 months. Uh, The hardest part was getting started and like, you don't see the changes happen every day, but I'm happy that I like stayed the course. Cause like now when you get the momentum, you can't replace that momentum. You're already, you already have the current like kind of in your favor. And we agree health is the most important thing. And you were fortunate or unfortunate, however you want to look at it, to have a health scare early on. So you mm-hmm. really appreciate every single day. And some people just, they're not there. They don't even take their health. They take their health for granted and they don't even think about it. But I know for me as well, it was probably 10 years ago when my health was at my worst when I got into the to the health industry, so to speak, mm-hmm. and you know, want to figure out why I was, you know, walking around and in pain throughout my body and all that type of thing. So, touch on touch on the touch importance on that. of health, like taking it for granted. Like you probably take your eyes for granted every day, but if you went blind, you would want to change that scenario very quickly. So the whole point is prevention and it's not even just about you. I feel like just, if you think about it just for yourself, it's selfish. A lot of people have children, they have spouses, they have mothers and fathers that love them. And if you don't like invest in just um, being healthy, mind, body, and soul, you know, it's just more than just what you put in your body. It's what you're thinking in your mind. And you have to improve upon that. And I got into meditation early. I don't know if you knew that. I've actually been to Tibet. Uh, I stayed a summer in Tibet, and I've meditated, like, with the monks and stuff. And my mom got me into that, and I think that's really helped me, too. I didn't know that. Yeah. I actually um, I have just a handful of tattoos, but one of them here is uh, I got in Tibet. It's in Sanskrit. It says, uh, compassion and mercy for everyone on earth. It's uh, a mantra. It's kind of like a prayer. And I think it's beautiful because I really believe that, like, again, no judgment on people. And I just, I believe that. I believe that, like, with compassion and mercy, you can move forward in your life. And when we speak on forgiveness and, like, non-judgment, a lot of people really need to forgive themselves. It's not even outward forgiveness. I think, again, personal development and entrepreneurship are so intertwined. And if you don't really work on personal development, then, like, you'll get so stressed in entrepreneurship. And then you'll treat your employees like terrible and you know you may turn to like other vices to cope personal development so important you're only going to grow to the level uh professionally that you do personally Mm -hmm. and so if you have a lot of momentum and you drop back it's because you have to learn something you have to you know some there's something you're not doing right it's a chance to learn again and and do better and grow so personal development is obviously everything i always always tell people that so any last words, anything that you haven't shared that you'd like to share? I think all of us have been through something, right? And none of us are perfect. Uh, I think that if you're in a state in your life where you would like to see changes happen, they need to really start with you. And, you know, like people like Ed My Let's say, I totally believe this, that you can't just change today and see the result tomorrow. It's like, you know, three to six it's months out, right? Um, before you see those changes happening and nobody's going to do that for you so if you want to see changes in your life the time is now and you really have to take full responsibility one more thing i'm going to touch on is just having having someone to to lean on and maybe almost like an accountability partner Mm -hmm. you know you have courtney that you guys are bouncing ideas you guys have came together i think that if you have somebody you can work with Mm -hmm to improve whatever it is in your life, it's going to make a huge difference. 100%. Like, you know, this path is lonely a little bit. Then, especially, like, uh, my age, a lot of 27, 28-year-olds, they're doing different things that I'm doing, you know? So I'm hanging out with, like, 40, 50-year-olds on the regular, which is fine, but, like, 
sometimes like my old friends, you know, you just see different paths. It's fine. But without Courtney, like this would have been like so much more difficult because working after Liv goes to sleep some nights to like two o'clock in the morning and just having, like you said, that accountability partner and she would say the same thing. It, it would have been almost impossible to do without her just as a emotional and mental support. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Fit Team Show. That's going to wrap up. We I appreciate I'm our grateful. friendship and, and working with you, and um, we all do. So thanks so much for coming <laughs> on today. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate you guys a lot.